morning, everybody. Welcome to Crossroads. Why don't you stand to your feet? We're gonna get started by singing together. I was lost with a broken heart. Picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash, I am born again. Forever safe in the same sands. You are more than my words can say.
and have a seat. Uh, good morning to everyone and welcome to Crossroads. Uh, my name is Katie. I'm one of the pastors here and I'm glad that we're together for week number three of the series, What on Earth Am I Here For? We think that's the most important question any of us could ask and don't we hope we get an answer? I want an answer to that question and we believe that uh, our purpose is found in God. And so that answer comes from God. And we are studying five purposes for every human being that God has made so clear in uh, his message to the Bible. So that's what the series is all about. It's such an important question. We're not just looking into it on the weekend. We have midweek activities uh, surrounding this. So there's uh, devotions for every single day of the week. And you can get that book at a table out in the atrium if you don't have it yet. Devotions every day, a midweek study, groups of people are getting together, people are forming their own groups. There's a study guide that goes in with the groups, there are videos. So if you want to jump into the midweek experience, stop at the what on earth am I here for table out in the atrium, we'll get you hooked up with that. And I hope that you got a program when you came in the door today. Everything that we print in this program is important. 
If it wasn't important, we wouldn't put it in there. So we hope that our whole church family reads this program because we typically only mention maybe one thing that's in here every, on the weekend. If you don't receive our e-newsletter, the feed, it means we don't have your contact info or maybe your contact info is wrong or your email address changed, something like that. So you can tear off that form, the tear off flap, and give us your current contact info. There's also a place there you could give us a prayer request. So if you want our staff and our prayer team praying for you or someone you care about, communicate with us and let us know that. And I want to mention one important thing that's in the program this week, and that's our Next Step classes, and they're happening on November 6th. They always happen on a Sunday. They start at noon with lunch. They last till 3. There are four Next Step classes. And actually, these classes align with the purposes that we're studying in this series. So for example, class 101 is our membership class, but the purpose behind that is fellowship. Every person belonging to a church family is one of God's purposes for your life. So our senior pastor, John Smith, teaches that first class. The second one is about the purpose of discipleship or how we grow in our faith. That's number two. 301 is about our, our talents and our spiritual gifts and how we can serve in ministry. That's purpose number, number three. And then the fourth class is about discovering our life mission, how we can make a difference outside these walls and out in the world uh, to help shape our, our culture uh, into the likeness of the kingdom of God. I and mean, that's really what that's about. So we hope that you'll be part of it because our purpose and our intention is for the whole Crossroads family to be on the same page with all of that. Hope we see you on, on November 6th and you can sign up for it online. It's free or you can talk to a Next Step volunteer in the atrium. And then the final thing I wanna mention is an update about Daring Faith. Daring Faith is our two-year church initiative that we launched in this 20th anniversary year of Crossroads with five bold goals, huge goals. We've contributed or, or committed $1.7 million as a church family to take these steps of faith in the next two years. And one of them is to increase our interactivity as a, as a church family, to interact more and more with our growing church family and the Northern Colorado community through enhancing our environments here on this campus and through technologies. So we're transforming our atrium this month, and it's going to be all done in time for Christmas. And you'll see these improvements being made. And if you're one of those people that cares about what our campus looks like or you have talents in that area, would you l let me know on that volunteer tear-off form and we'll get you involved. Or better yet, stop at the Daring Faith table and see Rod and say, I could help with that project uh, of getting that atrium ready in time for Christmas. See Rod at the Daring Faith table and if you haven't made a financial commitment or you wanna know how you could volunteer in Daring Faith, see Rod at the Daring Faith table. So those are the, the family updates for Crossroads and our hosts are ready to come and collect our offering. And we're going to pray before they do that. So would you bow your heads and join me in prayer? Lord God, uh, thank you for giving our church a vision and a mission. We're so grateful to have a purpose as a whole family. And we thank you for how that is represented in, in what we're stepping out in faith uh, with daring faith. And pray for these uh, financial gifts that are being given right now or have been given during the week. Our prayer is that you would increase them and you would bless them and you would uh, guide us and you would further your work and your kingdom through this church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Before we continue in our service, would you turn, say hello to the people you're around, introduce yourselves, and then you can be seated. everybody here this morning. My name's Dennis. I'm a pastor here. And um, before I get into my message, I just wanted to give you a little update about uh, Phyllis Smith, uh, the wife of John Smith, our senior pastor. Uh, many of you know that she had a very serious surgery about three weeks ago um, where they removed uh, a tumor from her spine, a cancerous tumor from her spine. It was a very invasive surgery. Um, and I wanted to let you know that she came home this past week, Thursday. We're thrilled about that. And I also want you to know that she normally watches this service live streaming. So I think we should tell Phyllis we love her, right? So let's do that all together. On, a th on count of three, let's say, we love you, Phyllis, all right? One, two, three. We love you, Phyllis. We do. We love you. And continue to pray for her. Continue to pray for her. It's a long recovery, and so continue to pray for her. Well, this guy uh, from the north uh, was on a business trip to the south one time, and he was very unfamiliar with southern cuisine. So he walks into a restaurant, and he notices an item on the menu that he's very, he just doesn't know what it is. So he, and, and the item is grits. And so the waitress comes, and he says, you know what? He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb. I want to order a grit. <laughs> and she just looked at him. She goes, honey. Honey, they always say that in the South. You can't get a grit. It's grits. Because grit, grits don't come alone. They always come in a community. <laughs> right? And you and I are the same way. We, don't, we weren't designed to be alone. We were designed to be in relationship, to be in a community. And we all know the pain uh, when we're not. We know the pain of being isolated, of being ignored, being overlooked, being secluded, pushed off. We all know the pain of that. And there's no pain like the pain of not belonging. There was a 10-year-old who wrote to Dear Abby one day, all my life I've been chosen last. That's my problem. Why don't they just hang a sign on me that says, reject, last one to pick gets me. There's no pain like the pain of being rejected. And there's no greater joy than the joy of belonging. And that's what I want to talk about today. Because God called us, God's designed us to be connected, to belong, to belong to his family, which is going to go on and on forever. In fact, God created the entire universe, and then he created the earth, and he put us here. Why did he do that? God doesn't need us. He didn't need to do that. The reason God created us is because he wanted the relational love in this unbelievable universe he planted, he, he created to, ex, to expand. And he doesn't need us. I mean, you know, adults don't need children. We have children, but we don't need them. In fact, if you need your kids, that's a setup for a problem. <laughs> God doesn't need us. But he also didn't want us to be orphans or street kids. So he created this family and to put us in. And and. As, as Katie mentioned, we're going through the great, big purposes of God. And last week, John talked about we were, formed for God's, we were formed for God's love, to be loved by God and to respond to him. And how we need to see ourselves the way God sees us. And today I'm going to talk about our second purpose, which is I am formed to belong to God's family. If you've got program notes, you can take them down, out, you can write that down. I'm formed for God's family. Ephesians 1, 4 says this, his unchanging plan, God's unchanging plan, has always been to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. Now, you can write this down. God's family is the church of Jesus Christ or the church of God. 
And he wants us to belong to that family, Ephesians 2.19. Now you are no longer visitors or strangers. Now you are citizens together with God's holy people and you belong to God's family. See, the church isn't an event. You know, it's not a program. It's not a building. And if I ask people, hey, where's Crossroads Church? You know, they go, well, it's, uh, it's that building on you know, North Tap. No, not really. That's the building, but that's not the church. Uh, some people say, hey, I'm going to church. Well, technically that's not true. Because church isn't something you go to. Church is something that we belong to. Because church is about relationship. The church is the gathered people of God. It's our relationship with God to each other that makes us a church. And today I want to talk about four benefits of belonging to a church. Because God designed his family, the church, to meet our four deepest human needs. And in fact, the church is the only one, only place where all of these needs can be met. And the Bible uses a lot of metaphors to describe the church, and I've picked four of the big, big dominant ones. And if we begin to understand the meaning of these metaphors, it's going to meet some of the deepest needs of our lives. So here's the first one. It's a family. I already mentioned that. In God's family, I learn my true identity. I mean, one of the most foundational questions we ask is, who am I? That's a question of identity. And you're not going to learn your identity from the world, from your friends, maybe even from your parents. Our core identity is found in our relationship to God's family. And one of the ways we answer the identity question, though, these days is, I am what I wear, right? We wear logos, we wear branded clothing, right? I mean, why do we do that? Well, because we feel cooler, or we feel hipper, or we feel when we're, you know, we're wearing the brand. And honestly, we're advertising for all those companies. How smart are they? They're, those people are going to pay us to advertise for us. How smart is that? So we wear these cool brands, you know, Under Armour, Banana Republic, H&M, my favorite, Forever 21. <laughs> Somebody said to me the other day, I'm creating a new brand, Forever 39. Anybody wear those clothes? Yeah, some of you, some of you need to wear those clothes. Another identity shaper is, I am what I drive. This car commercial for, that Matthew McConaughey does for that Lincoln MKX car, I mean, you... That commercial just drips of sophistication <laughs> and, and huge debt. But anyway, <laughs> I saw this picture. I took this picture the other day on the street of a pickup I was driving behind. I am a beast. And I thought, I wonder if the driver's talking about them or the truck. And then I saw the driver, and she was <laughs> talking about the pickup. Be nice. Gee, I don't know where you guys are today. <laughs> Some people, I am what I do. And then you get laid off or you retire and you don't know who you are anymore. Some people, I am my past. And we allow some past screw up or some past sin to go on defining us far into the future. And that's why I'm so thankful that we have a, a ministry here every Friday night called Celebrate Recovery. And if you came to Celebrate Recovery... And I have done this before where I, I, I would get up and I'd introduce myself. Hi, my name's Dennis. I'm a follower of Christ who struggles with comparison, competitiveness, self-hatred. And my identity is not tied to, even to my struggle, but my identity is tied to my relationship with Jesus. That's where identity is. And the truth is most of our identity comes from our relationships, whether they're good or bad. And if we have good relationships, our identity will be much healthier. If we have bad relationships, broken relationships, it's really hard. It's really hard. I'm a grandson. I'm a son. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm a pastor. I'm a supervisor. I'm a Christian. Every one of those is a relational term because God's wired us for relationships. And I know who I am because of my relationship with God and my relationship with other people. And what that means is if our relationships are broken, or we get disconnected, I have a hard time knowing who I really am. I mean, anyone, anyone who's gone through a divorce, I've heard people say, I don't really know who I am anymore. Or someone who's been married a long time and their spouse dies, it's very natural and very common for someone to feel disoriented, like there's a, a huge loss of identity. 
Some people grew up in messed up families, broken families. And no wonder kids from those families struggle knowing who they are, the identity questions. But here's some really great news, Ephesians 2.19. You are members of God's very own family, and you belong in God's household with every other Christian. It doesn't matter what kind of family we had, where we grew up. And here, this might come to a sh- as a shock to some of you, um, but God's family is the one that's going to last forever and ever. Your biological family, is gonna, it's not going to last. It's not permanent. It isn't. I mean, kids grow up. They move away. They get married. People get divorced. People, parents die. Oh, you might share your family name, but I know I share my great-great-grandfather's last name, Anderson, but I, I never knew him. I knew nothing about his family. His family had very little influence on me. But this family, the church family, oh my goodness, you have influence. We have influence on each other. And if we want our identity to last, we need to put it in a family that's going to last forever, that's not going to disappear. And God says in the Bible, his family, that's the one. That's the permanent family. It's going to go on and on for all eternity. And what matters most is our spiritual family. And here's some more good news, Hebrews 2.11. Jesus and the people he makes holy all belong to the same family. That's why he isn't ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Think about that. Jesus calls you, if you're in his family, a brother and a sister. And it says he's not ashamed to do it. How many of you have a brother or sister you're ashamed of? Don't raise your hand. Here's why that's pretty cool. Because you might be a little weird. And Jesus goes, you're in my family. You're in my family. You might have some sin in your life. Jesus goes, you're in the family. You're still in the family. I was thinking about this the other day. Because in life, we get bullied, right? Thoughts, people, etc. We get bullied. Here's the cool thing. Jesus goes, he's the big brother we've always wanted. Jesus goes to any bully in our lives, hey, you want to mess with my brother my sister? You got to come through me. Isn't that great news? Isn't that great news? And a lot of families have a symbol. Gangs have colors. Families have crests. Some families have kilts. It's part of who they are. What's the symbol of being in God's family? It's baptism. It's baptism. It's the way that followers of Christ say, I'm in the family. I belong in the family. And that's why it's so important to to do this, to, to be baptized. It's our way of saying to God and to saying to ourselves and to our friends, I'm in the family. I'm going to fly the family colors. And if you've never been baptized as a follower of Jesus, I would encourage you, the very last week into this series, uh, you can get baptized. You You can take that step of saying, you know what, I'm in the family. I'm going to go public with my faith. And right after the service, in fact, we're going to have a short meeting. Katie will tell you how you can do that, how you can be baptized. We're going to do that. Because you belong in the family of God. And when we do, we begin to understand our true identity. That's the first one. Here's the second one. The second picture or metaphor that God uses to describe the church is he says the church is like a temple. And temples in the Old Testament were the places where where a people went to meet with God. They went to experience the love of God. They went to worship God. And But in the, in the New Testament... God takes the idea of temple and he expands it. And this is what he says in 1 Corinthians 3. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and his spirit lives in you? Now, the temple is not a building anymore. It's the gathered group of people who love God. And yes, God's spirit is in us individually. But when we're together, I mean, you sensed it when you came in the room today. There's a buzz. There's a synergy. There's a a larger experience when we're together. You're not going to get that on church, watching church on TV. You're just not. we got to be together for that to happen. So I, I was thinking about the whole idea of a building. And I thought of this building. And I was here when, uh, when this building was built. And all the bricklayers and the construction workers were here. And, and I noticed that there's thousands of pieces that go into our building. But the most important thing about all these pieces, they have to be connected in order for them to be a part of the building. I mean, look at those beams up there. I mean, what if they were three feet short and not connected? Or what about, uh, I thought of the water pipes. What if the water pipes in the bathrooms were not connected? See the value of being connected? Yeah, in fact, if they're not connected, they're not really a part of the building. 
You know, I came in here one time and the shell was here and there was all kinds of stuff laying around on the floor. Lights and doors and vents and all that stuff. And I realized, you know what? These are just pieces. They're not really a part of the building yet. They don't belong to the building until what? Until they actually are connected. And I thought about us. And I thought about many of us here. You're here. You're in the family of God. But you don't really feel like you belong quite yet. Because you haven't taken the time to get connected. You haven't made the commitment to say, you know what? I want to belong here. I want to be more than an attender. I want to be a participator. I want to be a member. I want to get connected. And here's why connecting is so important and why God chose this metaphor as of the temple. Because in a building, when pieces are connected, they support each other. That's how it works. So you can write this down. In God's temple, I am supported by others. I'm not out there on my own. I'm not a lone ranger. I mean, look at the roof. How many of you are glad we have a roof? Yeah, well, guess why we can have a roof? Because they're connected to the beams. And guess why those beams are up there? Because they're connected to the wall. And guess why that wall is there? Because it's connected to the foundation. And the foundation is connected to the earth. And without the connection, none of those would have support. And here's why that's important for us to have support. Because sooner or later, something is going to happen in your life and you're going to need it. You're going to need support. Your life is going to start coming apart and you're going to need somebody to hold you together. Ephesians 2.21 says, In him the whole structure is what? Joined together. It's connected. And grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. We need support. You might not need it now. You might have all... There's going to come a time. And I think the number one epidemic in our society, in my opinion, is not cancer. It's not financial debt. It's not even psychological. I think the biggest epidemic in our society is loneliness. Relational disconnectedness. I mean, why has there been such an explosion of social media? It's because deep inside, we want to be connected. We need to be connected. And I'd just like to say to you know, all of us, this church is far from perfect. I mean, I'm very aware of the weaknesses and the flaws of this church. There's no perfect church, but I also want to say this. This church is full of loving people. This church is full of caring people. And if you take the time to get connected, you're going to find support in your life when you need it the most. You're going to find it. And honestly, one of the best places, maybe the best place to get connected relationally is in a small group. It's in a life group here at Crossroads. Um, when I was in California a couple weeks ago, I got a note that one of our people from our church, his father had died just tragically and very, uh, very tragically. And I talked with him, and, and he wrote me this note this last week. He emailed me. He says, about a week ago, last week, he says, was definitely a very difficult week. We were so overwhelmed with grief and the responsibility associated with finding full-time care for my, caretake, for my mom. She suffers from Alzheimer's, and my dad was her primary caretaker. We cannot express enough gratitude for the love, prayer, support, and fellowship that is provided by our small group through both the good times and the bad times. As far as our life group goes, we consider them to be our family. And when you have that, you're going to have support in the bad times, and you're going to have bad times. And honestly, I just want to say this. If your only connection to Crossroads is the weekend is here, you're going to experience a pretty serious gap in support. Now, we do have support here through our care ministries, etc., but it's not the same as having friends who are going to text you, email you, pick your kids up, clean your house when you need it the most. And the two words that Steve used in that email, support and family. And that can happen here. And we're designed to be connected in a church because that's where we can get support in the good times and the bad. That's the second metaphor. Now here's the third one. The third one is a body. The Bible calls the church of the church, the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you, and he's talking about Christians, you are the body of Christ, and each of you is a part of it. I mean, what, what, is, what does he mean here? Well, a body is made up of a lot of different parts, right? 
We were just, and, and together, if we weren't, we, we couldn't function really very well as a body. And here's what happens. When each part understands its role, understands and begins to do it, all of a sudden we find our place. We find our spot. We find our niche. We find out that we matter. We find our, our unique shape and our talents. And you're not going to find this anywhere but in the church when you, is where you can discover what your spiritual gifts are. We begin to employ them in a, in a community of people. So here's the third benefit. You can write it down. In Christ's body, I discover my unique value. I find my identity in the family. I get support in the temple. And here, I learn my value in Christ's body. Romans 12, 4, 4 and 5 says, Just as there were many parts to our body, so it is with Christ's body. We are all parts of it, and it takes every one of us to make it complete. For we each have different work to do. So we belong to each other, and each of us needs all the others. I want to talk to you just some quick bullet points right out of this verse. First of all, we're different. Everybody is different here. In fact, turn to the person and say, you're different. And God designed it that way. He wants everybody to be different. I mean, think about my, this body. What if I was a 165-pound eyeball? Boy, I could really see... I might be able to roll down the street, but I need to do more than see, right? So we're all different. We're all different. Here's the second thing. Everyone is needed. Turn to the person next to you and go, you're needed here. Nobody can say I'm not important. You're needed. Another thing, everyone has work to do here. So turn to the person and go, you have work to do here. And here's the fourth one. We belong to each other. So turn to the person and say, you belong to me. No, don't do that. No unintended marriage proposals here this morning. No, don't do that. But we're responsible to each other, and we're responsible for each other. And that's true in the, this body, in a church. It's also true in your body. We're responsible to the other parts. And if one part is not doing its job, well, it isn't pretty, very long before you know. Here, I'll, I'll prove it to you. I'm going to prove to you the value of your lungs. I want everybody to take a deep breath and just hold it until I tell you to let it out. Okay? Don't pass out, but just take a deep breath and hold it. Here we go. Now, I'm your lungs, and I'm going to talk to you for just a minute while you're holding your breath because I am sick and tired of doing all the breathing for this body. I'm just going to go on vacation for, you know, a few minutes, maybe a few hours. Um, you've never seen me anyway. Uh, no, you've never thanked me. I just do all the breathing on and on and on, and you begin to depend on me. And you know what? I'm going to let some other organ do the breathing for me for a while. I'm going to, hey, keep holding your breath. <laughs> you can let it out. 1 Corinthians 12 26, says, 12, 26 says, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer. You just realize the value of your lungs, and it only took a minute or less. What if your lungs did decide? I mean, you, you cannot, if, if, you, uh, if your lungs checked out for two minutes, you'd pass out. If your lung checked out for 20 minutes, you'd die. That's how important lungs are. And that's how important you are in the church. Because God says you're a part of the body. And your part matters. Your part matters. I mean, can you imagine what crossroads would be like if every one of us understood what our part in the body is, and we were doing it to the fullest of our potential. Can you imagine what this church would be like? And there are hundreds of you here that are going, you know what, Dennis? I really want to do that. How do I do it? I'll tell you. First, stop at the next step table right after the service. I'm going to get real practical here. Just stop and talk to one of our volunteers at the next step table and go, you know what? I want to get more connected here. How do I do that? We'll help you figure that out. And second, take the 301 class. You know, start with the 101, 201. We're going to offer them very often this coming uh, season, um, almost every month. So take the 301 class. You go, I don't, know, I don't know what my spiritual gifts are. That's the point of that class. We'll help you figure out what that is, and, and, and we'll help you figure out where you can serve here in this body. Because every one of you is needed, and every one of you is valuable. And that's the metaphor of the body. Now, here's the, here's the last one. Uh, it's the metaphor of the garden, specifically a vineyard. And it has to do with how being involved in a church helps you grow, like grapes on a vine. In John 15, Jesus says, I'm the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. You are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will what? Produce much 
fruit. And so this is the fourth thing that we learned. In God's garden, my life becomes productive. Your life needs to be productive. Nobody wants to get to the end of their life and go, well, I kind of wasted it. No, we want to get to the end of our life and say, I made a difference. I produced some fruit in my life. How much fruit? Circle. Much fruit, right? Much fruit. God wants your life to be a bumper crop. He wants you to be wildly productive. And what prevents fruit production? Verses 4 and 5, a branch cannot bear fruit, what? If it's severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful apart from me. You can't cut a branch off of your apple tree in the spring and wait for it and pick apples in the fall off of that branch that's laying. I mean, we just go, that's ludicrous. And it's the same way in a church. We can't produce fruit unless we're connected, unless we belong here. And that's God's design for us. He wants us to be connected just as our bodies cannot, I mean, we can't function without a liver or lungs. So this body is not going to be able to produce the fruit unless you're connected here. It's just the truth. I remember a person, uh, I told her recently, she was helping lead and teach a class with me. And, and I told her, I said, I cannot believe how fruitful your life has become here at Crossroads. Because it wasn't that long ago when they wandered in here and she and her husband sat back there in the bleachers. And they were here a while and then they moved up a little bit. And then they began to serve. Uh, the husband went with us on a Katrina trip a number of years ago. And then they began to lead. And then they began to give. And then they began to lead even more. And I, after she taught that class, I said to her, I said, could you ever have imagined 10 years ago that you'd be doing this? And she said, no. She said, no. She said, but I would, I can't believe that I get to do this. She is being unbelievably fruitful. Now, it didn't start there. It started by just going to the next step and go, hey, I want to get connected here. That's where it starts. And God's design for you is to be unbelievably fruitful. And he wants crossroads to be unbelievably fruitful. And we can't be, we won't be, until every part is functioning the way God designed you to function. So I find my identity in the family of God. I find support in my stability in the temple of God. I understand and discover my new value when I understand my gifts. And as I remain connected and grow, I can thrive and produce fruit that are going to last forever. Now let me ask you this question. Where is that going to happen any other place in society and in your life? There's nowhere. There's nowhere where that's going to happen. Nowhere in the world you're going to find all those things except in the plan of God who created the whole thing and he designed his family, the church, genius, brilliant idea. If, he would, if there was a more brilliant idea, he would have done that, but he didn't. He said, this is the best plan that I have for extending the love of God in the universe is to create a community of people who care and love for each other. And I want you to hear the story now of a, a, a friend of ours. Some of you will recognize Dylan. He plays in the band and... Um, He's our communications director as well, but I, he's going to come and just share briefly about the difference being a part of a healthy church has made in his life. So let's welcome Dylan. I didn't grow up in the church. My only memory was going with my grandparents when I was a kid. We sang weird songs and listened to some guy talk about things I had no understanding of. But when I was 15, my best friend invited me to church. At the time, I had no idea who God was, what it meant to follow Jesus, or why I existed. My reality was the pain I felt, a feeling of isolation, loneliness, and hurt. My depression was eating away at my soul. I was lost, filled with confusion about why I didn't belong anywhere. I felt like an accident. I was ready to end my life. Hopelessness owned me. It was at this moment that a radical shift took place in my life. I met a pastor in the church my friend brought me to. This pastor began to speak encouragement into my life. Then I began to meet more people who did the same. I was surrounded by people filled with the hope of Jesus. It was a light that began to drive away the darkness in my life. 
I could see the path that had long been hidden, the path that followed Jesus. When I moved to northern Colorado, I had a hard time finding a church where I belonged again. Then I found Crossroads. This church and the people here are authentic, compassionate, vibrant, and hope-filled. This is a church where all are welcome, all are loved, and all can belong. I still struggle with my depression every day. I'm on medication, and I've been to therapy. But if it wasn't for God and the church, I'd be dead. It was in the church that I found the people who showed me I was loved. It was in the church that I found the friendships that brought light into my life. It was in the church that I realized I'm not alone, that I was made for community. Nothing else in the world ever showed me that. It was only through God's people and God's church that I found God himself. Thank you for listening to my story. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan. Thank you. I'm glad you're sitting here. I'm glad you're part of this church. I really am. So I just want to ask everybody as I kind of end my time, why would you not want to be connected to a church like Crossroads? Why, why would you not? I mean, what's holding you back? But for some of you, you know, your family doesn't live here. You know, you moved here, your family lives in another, or maybe you're estranged from your family. We'll, we'll be your family. And no perfect families, right? We're not going to be perfect, but we'll be your family. We will. We will. Uh, join the rest of us. Some of you, you know, like Dylan, maybe you thought, you know what, I've never really found a place to belong. I've, I've never really felt wanted, never really felt like I fit in, never really felt like I've plugged in. And you're just, you're here today, honestly, because you're hoping that that can happen. And I just want to encourage you that it can. It might take a little time, um, but it can. Take the step. Take the next step. Some of you, you're unbelievably talented and gifted. And a lot of your energy is going to build corporate America. And we need corporate America. We do. But that company that you're working for in 200 years, I'll bet it's going to be gone. The church in 200 years, if Jesus doesn't return, is still going to be here. It's been here for 2,000 years. It's going to continue on. It's picking up steam. It's growing. It's rolling. And you know what? God's saying, uh, bring your talents to the church. I need you here. I need you. We, we need you. We want you. In order for us to become the kind of church God wants us to be in Northern Colorado, it's going to take all of us. And we need your talent. We need your gifts. And you're going, okay, I'm, I'm in. What do, I, what do I do? Here, I'll give you three things. First, uh, get baptized. You know, identify yourself with the family of God and say, you know what? I'm in. I'm in. Secondly, take the Next Step Class 101. It's coming up November 6th. Um, you know what? I'm going to find out what it means to belong here. I'm going to find out. I want to, uh, and I'm going to, you know, at the end of that, there's a, a commitment that you make, and, and I hope that you'll do that. Say, you know what? I'm in. I'm on the team. I want to play. And the third thing is join a small group. Get in a life group. Again, you can stop at the next step table. You can go out to the what on earth am I here for and say, you know what? I need to get relationally connected here. And that's, the, that's a great first step. And how about the others of you? You go, you know, I'm here, Dennis. I'm here. I'm faithful. I'm part of this church. I mean, here's my encouragement to you. Fall in love with the church. Fall in love with the church. You know, G Jesus calls the church his bride. Br not wife. Bride. Because there's something special about a bride. I looked up the definition. It said people call uh, them the bride up through the first or second year. And, then they, and I thought, well, Jesus goes, you're my bride, on and on and on. There's something special and, and elegant and anticipatory and expectant about the bride. And that's how he thinks of us together. And he loves the church. Jesus loves the church. And so fall in love with the church. And I've heard people say to me, you know, I love God, I love Jesus, but I don't really need the church. And some people say I've been really hurt by the church. And that's true. That's true. We get hurt in all kinds of relationships. We get hurt in families, etc. You'll get hurt in the church probably. But here's the deal. All of us have probably been hurt by a friend. That doesn't mean we give up on friends. It doesn't necessarily mean I can never have a good friend again. 
It just means I'm going to have to forgive and I'm going to have to continue to believe and trust that there can be a healthy church I can become a part of. Because here's what's very clear from God's plan from the beginning of time. It's the church is the hope of the world. This community is the hope of Northern Colorado, us and all the other churches. We're the hope of Northern Colorado. America is not the hope of the world. Politics certainly isn't the hope of the world. (laughs) Economics is not the hope of the world. Education is not the hope of the world. God's plan, his brilliant plan from the beginning of time was the church is the hope of the world. And if you need some hope, join us. Join us. Jump in. Jump in. Get connected. Because God's plan for the world is that through the, as we extend the love of Jesus in the lives of our neighbors, friends, communities, lives will be transformed. Marriages will be healed. Relationships between parents and kids will become healthy. Communities will be transformed. And our country will be transformed. And our world will be transformed because the church, God's family, is doing what he designed it to do. You belong. You belong in the family of God. You belong here. Dallas Willard wrote this. God's aim in human history is the creation of an all-inclusive community of loving persons with God himself as its primary sustainer and most glorious inhabitant. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you that even with all of our flaws and faults and weaknesses and sins... You still call us your family. You still want us to be in the family. And you came to put it all together. So you you, you died so that it could happen. And the church is the hope of the world. Of course, it's filled with imperfect people, but you love it. Jesus, thank you that you're not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. We're your family. And so I pray that we would act like a healthy family. We'd stick up for each other. We'd be for each other. We'd pray for each other. We'd forgive each other. And that when people look here, when people look at our community, not our building, but our people, that they'd go, I don't know about all those people. I don't know what they believe in that community. He said, but here's the one thing they love. Those people love. That's the kind of community you want to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Darkness surrounded by silence. So where, where have I gone? I walk to reality, losing its grip on me. Oh, where, where have I gone? Cause I can see the light Before I see the sunrise You called and you shouted Broke through my deafness Now I'm breathing in, breathing out I'm alive again You shattered my Took me so long I was looking outside As if love would ever want to hide Finding I was wrong Cause I feel the wind Before it
That's awesome. If you'd like to be baptized in uh, three weeks, uh, you could meet me over here in this section, right over here, and I can talk to you about getting signed up for that. And we have something here called Section Parties, which is really just a big food festival that we have every once in a while in sections. Out in the student center for the center section and the west section, go out to the student center and be part of the mixer out there. Meet some people in your section, have some great food. We'll see you next weekend. <laughs>